Everyone is born a scientist. We're born curious. When we start kindergarten, we're always asking the question, why? And that's what scientists do. We're all about asking questions. But somewhere along the line, we stop asking those questions. And so what I'm trying to do is get people back in touch with being a scientist. The award was established in 1986 uh, with the re uh, requirement that it be given to an individual who has made significant contributions to the cultural, artistic, and humanistic dimensions of science. And he wanted the award to recognize these other dimensions of what scientists do, especially in reaching out and communicating with the public. So I gave a TED Talk in 2012. I showed a piece of shape memory wire and I curled it and then I got a blowtorch and heated it and it uncurled and so that got everybody's attention. But then I said, this wonderful material is made possible by people who do science. So my TED talk was mostly about the importance of science, technology, engineering, and math, STEM education and why we need to make sure that every child has access to it, whether they become a scientist or not. She talks about science in a way that really gets kids and, and the general public excited about what science is and what science brings society. If I'm talking to young people and they're still wondering, can I be a scientist? I'll tell them my story about someone who was very shy, very uncertain, had many obstacles, but with a compass of having a love for science and with some mentors that pushed me along the way, I became the person that I'm in that's in front of them today. Well, her work brings science alive, makes it tangible to younger people, to a whole new generation of scientists that are considering whether or not to study science. We're always finding connections. We're actually hardwired for story. If you can inject science in there or tell the science story, then people aren't being hit over the head again with the science fact, but they're resonating with the information because it's coming from a story and it's just kind of folded in there. I wrote this book with Alan St. John, who's a sports writer. We said, let's ask crazy questions because we all can sit in a posture of looking at a crazy question and using that to unpack a hard question. So we start off with something crazy like, why don't woodpeckers get concussions? That's a hook that'll get people's attention. And then we explain why woodpeckers don't get concussions. By giving the award at our member society meetings, we're spreading the word that this type of work is valued. It's valued by society, it's valued by the American Institute of Physics, and it's valued by the member societies. When you get an institution like the American Institute of Physics saying, yeah, you're doing the right thing, and yeah, we support what you're doing, it's, it's sort of the, the thing that emboldens you and pushes you to continue to, to want to do more. The Gaman Award has a cash prize to the winner, but it also comes with a second award that's given to an organization that's named by the winner. And I actually gave it to the Jersey City Free Public Library, the Marion Branch, which is a very, very small, half the size of a Starbucks library that I spent a lot of my youth in. Someone made the investment for me, and so I should make a similar investment for the next generation. We're in a very technologically rich society, and we want to make sure that all of our children are participants. We want them to be pilots and not passengers for the 21st century. I want to be sitting on a train or on a bus and hear someone say, hey, did you know that they're making tires from lettuce? Or did you know that's a butterfly effect? I wanted the language of science not to be so foreign. So that's, that's my end goal. It's not much, but I just want science not to feel so scary and that it's just another way to describe our everyday lives.